so I don't have a flash meter and I didn't bring a GoPro Pro clamp. So this but, is experimental. <laughs> yes. So I'm gonna see how essential a flash meter is. Okay. Cool. I'm gonna try the flash. Like I said, I forgot my flash meter, but I was shooting flash on film, no digital camera around. Essentially, that means I was flying blind. I had no way to know if my flash was bright enough or too dark. This was from my Contax G1 without the flash. And I will go ahead and instead of trying to save everything for the end to tell you if it worked out or not, I'll go ahead and share what I got. Anyway, I had a Flashpoint Explorer 600 Pro um, with, as you can see, a gridded strip box. And there's a sandbag on the bottom, which are actually athletic ankle weights. So I was using the flash with the remote tethered to my Bronica ETRS with the PC sync outlet. I like the Bronica in this case, not only because it's medium format with a larger negative, but also because it has a leaf shutter, meaning it can do flash sync up to one five hundredth of a second. I made sure to turn off high speed sync on this because it's kind of pointless when you have a leaf shutter and can't go above one 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 five hundredth of a second. Anyway, I could get my ambient exposure, but I was going by pure experience shooting this flash exposure. The light was nice, but I really wanted to shoot flash for, um, I don't remember why, I just wanted to kind of see if I could do it. And as you can see, it actually worked out okay. And how I knew this might work is because I shot a bunch in the studio with this flash and I've shot a bunch of this flash in general despite not using it much in the last year or so. So I knew roughly at the 7 to 10 foot range about how strong it would be. It would be about an F8. I was shooting at 200 ISO because this was actually Portrait 800 that I was going to shoot at 200 and develop normally. A trick I picked up and kind of a risk. So I was just like going, going all over the place with risk and Portrait 800 is definitely not among the cheaper films. Anyway, uh, you never learn if you, you know, don't try. So despite having forgotten any kind of way to measure this flash output, I knew from experience that I could get roughly about f8 or f11 at this distance because you also have to remember that you have the flash, full power, bare bulb, really bright, but then you put a soft box or some other kind of modifier on it, it cuts the flash power roughly in half. And then you put the grid on there and it cuts it down even more. This photo didn't have a flash, by the way. So I went ahead and shot most of these, probably close to full power, maybe a little bit less. But overall, I kind of had a grip on what I would get for the output. I also hit the preview a lot, the, the flash preview to make sure it's firing. Not only because it's a good way that I can see the intensity of the flash at this point, because I've seen it so many times, I can kind of get a glimpse of how the lighting looks since it since a modern light's kind of useless out here but on that first photo you also saw the advantage of why i like the leaf shutter i can darken the background which is just a little bright which now that i think about it is probably the main reason i brought the flash because i wanted to tame the brightness of the sun because the the color of the light was nice but it was just a little intense but i wanted to also deal with some contrast on the subjects in this case catherine and Larbeth. I got the camera. I forgot plenty of stuff on this shoot, including a way to attach my GoPro to anything because I didn't think about my GoPro, which is usually mounted in my shoe, uh, flash shoe, was going to be homeless because I was using my flash remote in the flash shoe. So I got had to improvise a bit and it wound up in the bottom of my light stand, which was super handy. And real quick, I'd like to thank my patrons listed here on the screen for as little as a dollar a month. You can help support this channel and make it easier for me to go out and take photos when it's not snowpocalypse outside. Your contributions really do help me a lot and I really appreciate it. And if you can't, it's no big deal. You can comment, like the videos, and you know, talk and subscribe and, and yeah. Anyway, I decided to go under this tree for a little, a little bit of play in, with light. Also the environment. Also, the tree helped block all the direct sunlight from them, except for that backlight, which you can see pretty well here along her back. 
and I thought it would be something interesting and dramatic to try. So one thing you want to do when you're using flash outdoors, you have a couple of approaches. This is a picture on Kodak Pro Image 100, by the way. I shot that in the Context G1 without a flash most of the time. But anyway, you have a couple choices when you're shooting with a flash outside. And this was more of like a, I haven't used a flash in a long time, so I should probably, you know, just see what it's like again. But you have two choices basically when you're shooting with a flash. You want it to look like natural light or you want it to look not like natural light. They should both be very intentional. You want it to look like crazy surrealism with lots of color or, or odd placement. Or do you want it, look, want it to look like it was just brighter there even though the sun's behind them. Or that the sun wrapped around their face a little bit more. And I generally go for that approach lately. Although, like I said, it, success was hit and miss, but I was also kind of dealing with flying blind here. But speaking of flying blind, I didn't need to necessarily to do the guessing game with this because there's a thing called guide numbers. It's a little bit mathy, but stick with me. This will be very quick. Not the bears! Okay, let's see if I can get this. The guide number equation is subject distance from flash source times f-stop at ISO 100. For example, if a subject is 10 feet away and I want f8, I'll need a guide number of 80. The guide number for the Explorer Pro 600 TTL is around 250, minus half because I had a strip box in there, roughly, minus whatever the flash power setting I had. So I had this between half and full power, probably full power most of the time. At, let's just round up to 10 feet away. That would give me 125. Cut that in half, four modifiers. That give me 75. And because I wasn't exactly 10 feet from her, that's about the guide number I had when I shot these pictures of Catherine and Laura Beth. So yeah, if you do happen to find yourself in a situation I was in, or in which I was, uh, you don't necessarily have to fly blind if you can get the guide number of whatever flash you're using, or a, a rough estimate. Anyway, Laura Beth had this really cool trench coat. In a case of spontaneity being better than what was planned, she had a dress on that we had planned to shoot, but this coat was just way too cool to pass up. And also had a roll of Foma Pan 100 with me that I'd never shot, but thought it might be a cool noirish thing. But before we get to that, I'd also like to point out that yes, a digital camera would be nice because you can kind of get your your bearings of where your flash falls and if i'd had that that would have been handy but and yeah here is one of the foma pan photos and the non-flash kodak pro image photos which i actually thought um turned out pretty pretty nice and the sun was balancing out pretty well by this point and pro image has a nice penchant for making this balance out but uh, actually before we get to the foma 100 and other trench coat photos which are my favorite from this session actually uh, we, we got something kind of really important to look at because we have a cat a cat on the set he's hunting this is his habitat as silly as it can be it's kind of nice to just embrace the moment on the set it's also a good moment to bond with people you're working with just enjoying a small moment like this and Laura Beth also had some free toes that she was snacking on that she decided to see if she could lure the cat in for some photos. I'm pretty sure free toes aren't too harmful for the cat. And and really it, it, it was very, I don't even know if the cat actually ate mo more than a crumb. So, you know, I attempted to take a few photos, but the leaves were really confusing. And the Context G1 is not exactly known for it's really accurate and, and you know, perfect autofocus. So uh, I'll give it some slack. I also decided to try to take a few photos in this light just without a flash to see what Foma Pan 100 was like in this type of lighting and I don't think I did anything amazing with the photos but I really liked how the Foma Pan 100 looked. So I'm defi definitely going to be shooting with this again in the near future and that was kind of a wrap but we definitely need to look at these trench coat photos with Laura and Beth because I just really dig how they came out. And this was with the flash, of course, and uh, even that was with a flash. So I shot, I think that was probably my last Portrait 800 photo. And then the rest of these are on Foma Pan 100. 
shot on a Brownica ETRS with the Flashpoint Flash. And if you like this behind the scenes stuff, with random film adventures, and occasional cats and dogs, please subscribe and turn on notifications, like this video, and leave a comment. It really helps with the algorithm. And I know you hear that speech a lot, but it really does. It's, it's super helpful, and it's just a lot of fun to hear from you and interact with you. So thanks.